everyone, and welcome to Staking Mondays. Staking Mondays is a weekly show where we share specific knowledge from the staking industry leaders with our community. And of course, this is all powered by stakingrewards.com. At Staking Rewards, we are helping investors to navigate the landscape of yield generating digital assets, helping them find the best opportunities to earn interest on the crypto. My name is Ken Garofalo, and I'm extremely excited to welcome today's guest, John Patrick Mullen, AKA JP, is a fintech entrepreneur, tokenization expert, and educator living in Hong Kong. He started his career in investment banking, having worked at Goitoi Jeonwon Securities in Shanghai, China. He then was a founding team member and managing director of Trade.io, a cryptocurrency exchange and advisory firm based in Hong Kong. As an educator, he has spoken at leading universities across the world, including Harvard, London Business School, and Peking University. Additionally, John is a mentor for Entrepreneur First, a leading deep tech accelerator, and Longhash, a global blockchain accelerator. And now he has built one of the first cross-chain DeFi platforms with Mantra DAO. So welcome, JP. Thanks, Ken. Glad to be here. Appreciate it. Good to be here at the Staking yeah. Rewards uh, community. Absolutely. And we're, we're so thrilled to have you here. And, and JP, just a little bit of an icebreaker to start us off. Uh, I'd like to know some of your first interest. What piqued your interest as a project outside of BTC and Ethereum first and why? Uh, good question. Um, I think just because I'm rocking the Terra hat <laughs> um, and it hit an all time high today, new all time high today that we'll have to go with, with Terra and, and, and the Luna ecosystem. Um, I think really the way that they've kind of designed and developed their decentralized stablecoin with UST and a lot of the fair launch products and projects that they've you know had and are going to continue to have coming out uh, was one of the kind of the things that kind of attracted to me in the first place. Um, also, back when we were first launching MantraDAO, one of our core pillars of the business is, um, is, is obviously running validator nodes. And one of the first projects they were able to get in touch with um, was, was Terra. And we had a pretty good conversation with Doe actually. Um, this was like roughly a year ago. Um, and we're actually quite fortunate that we were able to pick up a pretty significant amount of Luna at like roughly 45 cents. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it was a pretty, a pretty nice, uh, a pretty nice pickup, I'll say. And just having, you know, having being able to speak with him and, and kind of see the vision that he had um, and the way that he thought about how his own project was developing was was definitely one of the interesting ones. Um, so yeah, you know, maybe maybe that's one of the first one that we kind of really dove into. Um, Outside of like maybe Polkadot and Kusama, I would say as well. Yeah, and, and we here at Staking Rewards, we love the Luna ecosystem as well. Uh, we even had Do Kwan here on one of the Staking Mondays episodes nice. a few weeks back. So uh, for anyone watching that wants to go see that, check out our YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, um, shout out to Do. <laughs> yeah. So so let's dive right in. Let's dive right into some of these questions here and get a little bit of better idea of what Mantra Dow is doing. Uh, so sure. for you, what was the biggest challenge? building a tool that allows users to interact with multiple blockchains? Um, I think one of the biggest challenges, to, to be completely honest, is that, you know, you're, you're obviously dealing with a bunch of different programming languages, you know, um, when you're working with kind of EVM compatible blockchains, you know, like Ethereum, Matic, BSC, um, Phantom, etc. Um, it's a little bit easier and, and you can kind of run everything through a you know, similar infrastructure similar tooling. Um, you can use MetaMask RPCs for everything. Um, so it's rather easy. And to be honest, you can you can also uh, kind of educate your community on how to use these things. Because to be honest, a lot of them have not used them. Um, it may be under one kind of roof. Uh, this gets a lot harder when you're talking about adding, you know, uh, Polkadot, which has, you know, totally different wallet system, totally different Explorer uh, uh, networks. Um, Obviously, you have to use a different developer as well because you know you're talking Rust versus Solidity. Um, you know, then you get into Solana, then you get into you know Terra. Um, all these different things uh, becomes quite challenging, and it requires a lot of people. Um, you know, because you have to replicate you know front end, back end wallets, you know, across a bunch of different languages with potentially people who just don't have experience in in, in those chains. Um, you know, even spinning up nodes. Um, requires learning the different intricacies of you know each various chain and network, um, even within Cosmos SDK chains, tenement chains. Um, there's still some differences, um, 
so you know that 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 was one of the one of the bigger challenges is um you know i think i said multiple there but one of the bigger challenges was just kind of getting up to speed on all the different intricacies of all these all these various chains and then um you know finding the right personnel to to actually be able to, to build it right and then and then further providing the education to the users so they know how to use the product yes yeah. ex ex exactly you know i mean i think one of the um the, the, the biggest things is, you know, you, you get people who are used to one ecosystem or the other, and when you're trying to get them to experience, you know, all these things at the same time, it can be a little bit, I mean, even just between Ethereum and like Polygon, for example, people still don't necessarily know, um, particularly if they're really kind of a retail focused segment um, of the crypto population. Like we're having a, we have a launch pad as one of our products and our, we have our first launch pad tomorrow on Polygon. Um, and you have to teach the people how to migrate their assets from Ethereum to Polygon. You know whether it's uh, you know they need to have Matic in their wallet. They need to add the RPC to get onto Polygon. They need to have you know the the actual payment token on Polygon as well. And then there's fees and all these things. So it's 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 a challenge. Um, the experience still is not like frictionless by any means. So you know I think one of the things to to, to work with multiple multiple different blockchains is you do have to continuously uh, educate as well. It, it really is a challenge. Absolutely, and some great insights there. Um, so for you and the team, how do you guys decide which blockchain ecosystems to focus on uh, and, and how many more are you planning to add into MantraDAO? Yeah, good question. Um, to be honest, we're like extremely agnostic in, in, in the different ecosystems that we go after. I know there's a lot of tribalism in crypto and we try to stay as far away from that as possible. Like, of course, we like to support some of the, some of the projects and chains and networks that we've been involved in since, since the early days. Um, obviously, Polkadot and is one of them, Terra is one of them, um, Matic is one of them, for example, Matic and Polygon is one of them, for example. Um, but that does not mean that if there's, you know, if there's, we're also pragmatic. <laughs> And if it can make the project in the DAO money um, and there's a community need for it or community want, like, of course, we want to support it. You know, we were we were early in Cardia chain. We we're pretty early in Tomo chain as well, for example. Um, and these types of these types of networks, you know, we also look for opportunities, so, you know, strategic opportunities to be early or be first. So one of the things uh, with us is like we were rather um, a late comer to the kind of Adam or Cosmos and you know maybe Kava and Ban and a couple of these other uh, um, um, chains that we are that we run validators for, and you already had kind of incumbents in place that had significant validation stakes, and were were not necessarily easy to kind of get into the either the active set or into you know a top ranking um, position. Um, so of course you have to kind of balance this out, right? Um, and that being said. Um, we want to support as many as we can. Um, we've launched products currently on Ethereum, BSC, Heco, uh, Polygon, and um, are building Solana and Terra products, and of course, and of course, uh, Polkadot as well, or Substrate. So um, obviously, that means we have to figure out where we're deploying, <laughs> um, and we're waiting for Kusama Parachain auctions to continue and Polkadot to Polkadot Parachain auctions to start. Um, but we have some ideas about you know where we're going to go there. Um, so keeping the options open, um, you know, again, you can kind of see front runners a little bit in some of the, some of these, uh, some of these races, so to speak, but, um, you know, we want to be everywhere we can when there's community demand and there's opportunity. Um, so we'd like to move fast, ship products. And if we can launch on 10 different chains before, you know, our competitors, I use that term very, very lightly, um, then, then why not? <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, yeah. we're, we're pretty open and, and it, it, it does come a lot from community feedback. We, we like to listen to our community and if they're like, okay, we want you on X die or, oh, we want you on Phantom or, you know, obviously we're exploring the, you know, Optimism Arbitrum as well um, for ETH layer twos. So like we're, we're pretty open. <laughs> yeah. I'll, constantly having your ear to the ground, listening to the community. I know you guys have a, uh, we have some Sherpas here in the uh, the chat, yeah. so uh, I'm sure they always have their opinions, and it's hard shout to uh, <laughs> filter yeah, those out. Yeah. Sherpas. <laughs> <laughs> so, are so are you planning to integrate any other staking or DeFi protocols other than your own validators and Zentris? Um. So, I mean, obviously, the whole, the most important thing in our mind, I would say, is that we need to find ways that there's 
you know, value accrual for our native OM token. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the ways to do that is obviously having it be a key piece of various different protocols that would be part of our platform, right? Um, so I, I don't necessarily think we have exactly like, you know, we're going to go integrate, you know, Aave or, or something like this or some sort of derivatives. Um, you know, it just doesn't really make sense for our token. Um, that being said, if there's one thing that I could say that's like a sister project that we're working on, uh, it's like the regulated version of Mantra to a degree, um, is called a, is a new one called Soma Finance, which is a U.S. regulated AMM and DEX. Uh, so it's a joint venture partnership between Mantra and a U.S. broker dealer called Tritorian Capital. So a 50-50 split. And um, basically, it's one of the, it'll be one of the first regulated AMMs out of the United States under the SEC regulation, FINI regulated. Um, so we'll be able to trade, you know, tokenized equities, um, crypto assets, ETFs, commodities, all these different things, but having a DeFi experience uh, so you can, you know, yield farm. We have a bunch of different yield farming strategies and pools that we're going to be launching. So that'll be, that'll be kind of exciting. Um, but obviously that is something that's like, you know, it actually, the whole idea came out of um, basically a regulated version of our launch pad. Um, mm. So we're, we're thinking of how can we do regulated launches in the United States? Because obviously the U.S., and SEC sees everything in a certain way. Um, we like Mantra being what it is, and it helped to have another kind of brand that was maybe a little bit more buttoned up, a little bit more institutional, whereas uh, Mantra is, you know, Mantra's Mantra is <laughs> Mantra. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so like outside of that, I don't really think we have just anything like at the moment. Um, but yeah, so, you know, well, I guess to boil it down, TLDR, um, you know, if it has value accrual for the OM token and there's, you know, there's a, there's some additional benefit for the OM token, then we would consider it. And with Soma, I didn't even mention this, but with the Soma project, um, Soma stakers, or excuse me, OM stakers on the Mantra platform, OM suppliers on the Mantra platform, uh, they'll have a, per, not perpetual, but at least perpetual for, for, for a set period of time, I think a couple of years, where they can earn Soma airdrops just by staking um, OM as well. Um, I think it's like 4% of the total supply of the Soma token will be uh, distributed to OM stakers and suppliers. So you know, that's just one small example of uh, why you, why, how, how, they, how they interconnect. That's really exciting news to hear. And, um, you know, for me personally, just hearing what you, you said about Soma there, I, I'm very interested. Tokenized equities seem to have disappeared recently. So to hear they coming back in a, in a structured, regulated format, uh, from a from a joint venture here, it seems is is extremely exciting, and I hope our listeners uh, take advantage of staking some own tokens uh, to get that four percent of Soma. Um, Appreciate it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think currently is the most trending ecosystem where you see the most innovative developments happening outside of Ethereum EVM chains and outside of Polkadot? We'll say. I mean, got to be it's got to be the lunatics. Um, in my mind, Solana obviously is, 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 you know, it's, it's pretty, it's going crazy as well. Tons of development happening over there and you got some masterminds behind, behind them. But, but really, I mean, maybe it's just cause I have like some cognitive dissonance or some bias because of the way my Twitter feed looks, but it's just like, it's just constantly lunatics talking about, you know, all these new projects and you got anchor protocol, which is, is, you know, a, a, a very interesting money market lending product. You got mirror. Which is synthetic as synthetic as is not tokenized. Mars protocol looks cool. Astroport is the dex that's coming out. I mean, you know, there's just tons of Apollo DAO. I mean, there's tons of tons of really cool projects coming out there. And I, I do like the fact that they do like these kind of fair launch um, ways of, of, of raising capital. I think they kind of raise raise some money from probably from TFL, Terraform Labs, and then you know, maybe some select investors, but they give away a lot of the token. They give away a lot of the token to Luna stakers. Um, so, you know, I, I, outside of my own token or own token, Luna is my second biggest bag by far. Um, you know, there's just tons of, tons of upside there. And, you know, I think the community is extremely active. Um, you know, they engage properly. Uh, they share a lot of really cool information. And, you know, even when there's, you know, questions about certain things, I think they do a good job of listening to, you know, constructive feedback and trying to, you know, implement change in a positive way. So there's a lot of really, really smart, smart, like anonymous people on Twitter that, you know, share some cool stuff about, about Luna. If I could do another plug, maybe Rune or Thorchain. Okay. Um, 
that they've, they've got another pretty pretty cool ecosystem going on over there. And actually, I know there's a lot of crossover between those three ecosystems, Solana, Rune, and or Thorchain, and, uh, and Terra. So you know, the, the, those would be the three outside of Polkadot in any VM chains, if, if I had to had to say. Yeah, this is some really uh, high level insights here. And if anyone in the audience is listening, just staking some of these tokens just opens you up to a, a whole different variety of yields. Um, we even have Encore protocol listed on the site that shows, you know, this this 20 percent plus interest rate on USD, which is just incredible. Yeah. I mean, you can't get that in a bank account, right? You're not even getting uh, a tenth of that in a bank account at this point, a yeah. traditional bank account. Yeah. So uh, there's ways to get yield on stable assets that are that's pretty breathtaking and uh these protocols that you mentioned are unlocking some of that. So, uh, in your opinion yeah. here, yeah, in, in your opinion here, do you think there'll be one winner, uh, one winning ecosystem for DeFi and smart contracts in general, or can multiple layer one networks coexist or maybe merge into one? Um, no, I, I don't think there's ever going to be one winner. Um, you know, there's too many people. I mean, it's just, it's just there's just too many smart people building too much cool stuff. You know that you know maybe not every single part of one ecosystem is going to be a winner, but you know maybe there's going to be more people using the Luna Dex versus the you know Thorchain Dex, for example. I, I don't know. Maybe there's going to be more people on the Thorchain money market than than the Luna money market, right? Um, I don't know. That being said, I think there's significantly strong communities behind a lot of these various uh, layer ones or even layer zeros if you talk about Polkadot um, or what they deem as a layer zero. And you're already seeing that a lot of them are interconnecting anyway, right? Um, you know, Luna's connecting through through Wormhole with Solana. Um, they're bridging assets across all these various chains. With IBC, of course, you're connecting all the Cosmos uh, Tendermint assets as well. And with uh, the, the with the new Terra upgrade, I think they'll be on IBC within the next month or two. I can't remember exactly the timing, but it's coming shortly. Um, you know, so you're already talking about you know cross-chain bridging of assets. Um, that's 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 quite cool. Um, so I don't I don't think there's a winner takes all. And uh, you know, our whole attitude is that there's just so much innovation and development happening on all these different things, and it, a lot of it's also geographic too. I mean, I think you diversify by being in a lot of these you know various communities, various chains, networks. Um, not just because they do different stuff or they have a different focus or a slightly different focus, but they also have different communities from, you know, different parts of the world. You know, uh, that, that does matter. Um, there's significant advantage to being a, either an anonymous founder or, you know, in a founder that's not from the United States, uh, building DeFi stuff. <laughs> I think that works for dough. <laughs> no, um, it's a little harder if you're going to be a U. I'm from the U.S. <laughs> uh, I live I live in, uh, in in Hong Kong now, and you know you you do have to be mindful of of what you're building and you know where your where your setup is right. You know, um, Mantra has zero U.S. nexus at the moment outside of just two of the founders being or a couple of the founders being American. Um, but we don't have we never did a token sale for Americans. We never launched anything in the United States. The comp, there's no you know connection there. Um, and recently, with all the SEC uh, discussions and with with uh, uh, Gary Gensler talking about you know what they deem as a security and some of the stablecoin regulation that they see that should that they believe should be coming, um, that has a significant impact on what you can build and where. So I think that should be a reason for an individual to look at diversifying across a number of different things, just because there are risks from all different angles and geography plays a role in that. Um, so yeah, I think there's 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 going to be plenty of uh plenty of opportunities there, and you know I think um, it's a little bit uh, short minded to just go all in on anything. <laughs> Absolutely, and in a little bit off the cuff here, I think you touched on an important subject with the the infrastructure bill that's kind of being discussed now mm -hmm. in the U.S. Do you think that the kind of regulations that exist within the U.S. are putting U.S. citizens, U.S. investors, U.S. builders at a disadvantage to the point where they may have to even move their companies or move their person to a different country to just continue doing and innovating in the space? I mean, absolutely. Um, not a huge fan of the way that that uh, bill was put together and kind of uh, passed in, in the Senate. Um, we'll see what happens in the House. I mean, there's the one good thing to see was there was a lot of coming together from the various communities um, particularly in the United States uh, of, of people, you know, get, getting out and talking to their senators, talking to their, you know, the people who are supposed to be answering to them. 
Um, not sure they all end up doing that because <laughs> um, they all have their agendas. <laughs> but um, you know, there there was a lot of unification behind that um, within the space, and that was kind of cool to see. You know, I I think the fight is is far from done, but there could be potentially last long long lasting damages that comes from this if if we don't get it right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, realistically, I think there was an opportunity for the United States to kind of continue to take its leading role further, um, you know, particularly as China has in the last couple of months, like really clamped down, um, not just on crypto, but just a, a lot of stuff, um, you know, trying to get rid of that, some of that outside influence, I think. And uh, the U.S. has an opportunity there to take advantage. You know, a lot of the Bitcoin mining is leaving China. Um of, of course, proof of work was not passed under this or not covered under this bill, but proof of stake, which I'm sure you guys believe as well as we believe, is is, is a significant part of the future of crypto assets. Um, and if you're going to count validators and wallets and all these guys as as brokers, that's going to have a significant problem um, for the space. And you could see people leaving. Um, I guess the one potential good thing is it's a little bit easier to move servers and it is to move massive bitcoin farms uh bitcoin mining farms i guess um that being said you know i i, I would like to see the uh, the us you know, take a leading role in a positive way um across you know the digital asset space and um in general i think the bill was 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 a bit hastily uh well not a bit it was extremely hastily created and uh and passed yeah well, uh, very valuable insights there. And thank you for touching on uh, what could be seen as a touchy subject for some. So uh, appreciate the insights. And getting, getting back on on sort of uh, Mantra Dow script here. So what do you think is sure. basically uh, the unique selling point for, for Mantra? Why should someone stake with Mantra opposed to your competitors? Sure. So um, I think there's a couple of things. So, I mean, if you divide kind of proof of stake delegation and nomination and kind of the DeFi style staking, um, you know, we're trying to create and mix both of those into one platform. So this way that users can basically do it all in one place. So, you know, they can stake their Ethereum assets, their Polygon assets, their BSC, their Solana, their Polkadot, their Kusama, I mean, everything in one place, um, both like validation on chain um, with, you know, with POS consensus, as well as just, Kind of like yield farming opportunities so we're trying to create kind of like an all-in-one platform that mixes both pos and this DeFi kind of primitive of you know staking and yield farming um i think the other thing is we've created a kind of like a tokenized uh delegation model um that we've run or rolled out for um polka dot and kusama that's worked quite well and basically users can come and they can basically bond their polka dot or kusama address with their Ethereum address, which is where the OM token is kind of like natively launched or where it was natively launched. And based off of their you know, participation on the node throughout the course of a month, they can also earn some additional rewards in OM tokens um, that then they can be entitled to. So they can actually earn two tokens uh, in one go. Um, you know, obviously the, if you stake OM as well, then you can earn more tokens and, and whatnot. Um, so right now that's live on Polkadot Kusama up next, we're going to be launching very shortly on Terra, obviously. Um, uh, Polygon, Atom, and then all the Cosmos ones uh, will come shortly after that. Um, we're actually trying to make it even simpler because right now we we've had it so that you can you you still have to kind of connect your various you know uh, wallet wallet addresses. So whether you're using JS, Polkadot JS, or whether you're using Kepler, um, MetaMask, Trust Wallet, whatever. Um, we're trying to make it so that it's a bit more kind of seamless and through one 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 interface. Um, so we're working on that at the moment, actually, which should make it a bit more, a bit smoother of a user experience. Uh, so that's, I think that's one, uh, maybe two things. So we just have it all under one, one house, one roof. And the other thing is that you can earn, you know, even, even more rewards than you can on most of our competitors, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a uh, definitely an attractive point. If I can earn multiple tokens as a reward from multiple sources, I'm interested, get me in there. I want to learn more. And especially you having exactly. an education backgrounds you have developing resources on how to onboard more users so the process becomes easier and more user friendly uh, so i love to hear this type of, exactly um, appreciate it and so you've actually dropped a lot of free alpha i guess you could say during that last uh, <laughs> answer uh, but if you could narrow it down to the single sure. best staking or passive income opportunities with mantra 
within this universe, what would it be? Hmm. Um, currently, I think staking ohm on Polygon is like 116%, if I'm not mistaken, roughly. Okay. Um, 116% APR for ohm on Polygon. It's also super cheap to use and interact with. Um, other than that, I mean, I think really it, like you can't go wrong with uh, with staking Luna because like you're going to stake Luna and then, you know, eventually you're going to earn Ohm, but then you're also going to earn Mirror, you're going to earn Anchor, you're going to earn Pylon or Mine. And pretty soon you're going to have, you know, Nebula and Spar and Orion and all these other ones. Um, so there's a bunch coming out. So I think if, if you got to have one node, uh, that would be it, Luna. Okay, guys, everyone listening. That was it. That was the highlight of the talk here. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm doing. This is my own alpha too. So this is this is my my own game plan. <laughs> Follow what the man says, right? You know, mirror the moves, so to say, right? Um, so we did have one community question winner. Uh, this winner is going to receive 50 hearts, which is our database loyalty token on staking rewards. Uh, and this winner is Dr. Zen Polygon. And the question coming from him is, Besides the wallet and DeFi staking, what are future plans for Ohm on Mantra DAO? Uh, good question. So, you know, as I mentioned, we're we're we've basically built a lot of our product suite on Ethereum, BSC, uh, Polygon, and Heco at the moment, um, and this is just going to be continuing to replicate, you know, the existing product suite and launch more of the existing products on those chains. So, pretty soon we'll have Zentris, which is our money market on BSC. Um, we're going to have Zentris on Polygon. But then we're also going to launch everything on Solana and uh, Terra in the not too distant future. Um, we're building like a proprietary money market uh, as well on, um, on Substrate with using Ink smart contracts. That's not too too far off. Um, what else? I mean, we're we're redoing our launch pad uh, to just kind of create a different style of 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 launching tokens. Um, it's a bit more like a liquidity mining launch like, rather than like a fixed swap launch. Um, I think it makes it a little bit more fair for projects and it actually should incentivize significant amount, significant amounts of liquidity and LP fees for liquidity providers on the own token on whatever chains that we're going to be launching this on. Um, so that's coming. Um, so you could call that like Launchpad or Zendit, or, or Launchpad's called Zendit, Zendit 2.0, if you want to say. Um, we have a Dutch auction, but no one's used it yet. So if anyone wants to come do a Dutch auction with us, holla. Um, and then we're, we're exploring, um, you know, building our own, our own like mantra chain, if you want to call it that we don't have a name just yet, but it's something that we're looking at because, you know, we've, we're launching all these different products and, um, at least for anything that's kind of, um, proprietary to us, you know, we want to have the ability to have token value capture in Ohm. Um, and actually this was an, 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 an idea kind of inspired by. Uh, Luna, uh, because of the way that they do it, and you know they have instead of launching a hundred different things on one DAP, um, you know they create a hundred different DAPs on one chain. Um, so this isn't you know this is a little further off, but it's definitely something that that that's being considered. Um, so yeah, that that's something because then we could do you know again these fair launch opportunities where you know if, like we have a product which we're, we're considering or we've we've been considering called Karma which is our under collateralized lending uh, product. That's a perfect opportunity to launch another token that we can distribute and people can earn by participating um, in various numbers of ways, including by, you know, delegating or nominating their own, um, providing liquidity, all these different types of things. So so that's just an example off the top of my head, but that's one thing that uh, we're, we're definitely considering because we do see a multi-chain ecosystem, right? So, um, with with the you know the advent of of substrate and also you know even with the cosmos sdk it's assuming you have enough community and you, you can get the validator set in place you know it's easy enough to you know anyone can build their own blockchain right um and you can be specifically focused on certain things or, or others so that's uh that's one thing we're definitely uh looking at <laughs> well that's certainly exciting that you're dropping this sort of news here on the uh, staking mondays episode and really absolutely <laughs> The folk, yeah, and and your main focus is really capturing all this value, bringing it back to the Ohm token, right? So it's really rewarding your community and keeping everyone uh, happy and, and participating. And 
engaged and that's what it's all about. So just totally focused and glad to see uh, giving us this information here and, and getting us excited. I'm sure you're getting your own community excited as well with that news. So a lot of really uh, great things coming in the future here for Montreal. Appreciate it. I mean, I think one thing that, um, you know, we've learned from our previous experiences um, that you can never forget is that regardless of if you think it is or not, the token is a product, just like your launch pad, just like your validator business, just like whatever, whatever, whatever. And you have to treat it as such. And um, you need to always make sure that, you know, the model that you're creating does capture value. Otherwise, you know, that's how you are going to lose community. You know, one, you got to get the ship product and two, you got to make sure that you're always thinking of ways that you can create value for the token, um, which inherently, you know, creates value for the end user. Um, so that's just an important thing I think uh, I'd like to kind of add and uh, just the way that we see things within, within crypto, I guess. Really well said JP. And so how can people follow you, learn more about the stuff you're working on? Um, I think the best is probably uh, Twitter or you can holla at me in telegram. I'm pretty, pretty active there. Um, so Twitter, I think is JP underscore Mullen 888. Montredao likes to use the number eight. So gotta have the 888 <laughs> um, and, or, and or Telegram. So you can hop into Montre Telegram and, and you know, someone will get me if you shout at me. <laughs> <laughs> he is reachable folks. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. We really enjoyed the talk. I'm sure the users are going to find a lot of value in this. And for everyone watching and wants to check out previous episodes of Staking Mondays, we have uh, interviewed Tor Bear from Secret Network, Do Kwan from Terra Money, Zaki Manion from Cosmos, Stani from Ave, Arthur from Tezos, Chao Wang from DeFi Alliance, Jack Liu from Wanchan, the list keeps going. These are all high profile guests and we have so many more planned in the future. And we also have a sponsor for this episode. Uh, this episode was sponsored by Gravity Dex. We're gonna show a quick clip here from them other than that, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Please like and subscribe to our channel. And as always, happy staking. Thank you so much, JP. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.